even if Green Bay had lost last night, because Garoppolo led the Niners down, and you're like, what's going on here? Green Bay's the better team tonight. Even if the Packers would have lost, that was the most impressive display by the Packers I think I've seen in multiple years. For the first time that I can remember, they went toe-to-toe, and they had to do it on the road with a super talented, well-coached, physical team. And they weren't pretty, and they didn't finesse it. They were right in the octagon with the 49ers, and the Packers were the more physical team. The Packers' defensive front, and the Niners have a Hall of Famer at left tackle. That's a good offensive line. Packers' defensive front sat Garoppolo four times, hit him ten times. He's never been hit ten times in a game. The Packer defensive front, their front seven, missing, by the way, a player or two, push the Niners' offensive front around the field. The Packers' offensive line, missing arguably the best left tackle in football, David Bakhtiari. They were on their third-string left tackle. Opened up running lanes for Aaron Jones. Gave Aaron Rodgers time to throw. That was impressive. That was a dogfight. I've seen, I said this last week, I've seen so many Green Bay wins, you know, Aaron Rodgers, comfortable, time to throw, dices, slices. That's a dogfight. Green Bay was the better team last night. They were the better team from the first drive. Matt LaFleur out schemed Kyle Shanahan. The, the Packers out physical, one of the most physical teams in football. And this is important now because to get to the Super Bowl, and that's Green Bay standard now. Let's get to the Super Bowl. We're not talking about wild card stuff. This is the different. This is the Yankees in baseball, or the Dodgers in baseball. This is, you know, this is your your big boy college football powers like your Ohio State Notre Dame. The Outback Bowl's not good enough. We're talking Super Bowls. So what does Green Bay have? The best teams in this league, and let's just talk Tampa Bay. Green Bay has three components that are very, very important, crucial to beat Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Number one. Jair Alexander, they have an elite corner. So they can just go say, you guard Mike Evans. Like, try to take Mike out of the game. That's very important. Rams also have that in Jalen Ramsey. The Packers also have, we saw it last night, Kenny Clark and their interior pass rush. They can make an old quarterback uncomfortable, right at his feet, get Tom uncomfortable. Not beating Tampa if Tom's comfortable for three and a half hours. And the number three thing is, They have the ability, Green Bay, to go over the top with Devontae Adams and score very, very quickly. You're not going to run the football on Tampa. You're not running the football on Tampa. So you've got to figure out a way to get cheap points. So between the great corner, the interior rush, over-the-top scoring, and you saw it all on display last night against a very physical football team. Uh, I just can't tell you how impressed I was with Green Bay. And, you know, listen, you can lose games – Believe it or not, and I can go, wow. And when Jimmy Garoppolo came down the field and scored, I I thought, this doesn't make any sense. Green Bay is the better football team tonight. The better football team, 90% of the time, wins in the NFL. Green Bay was the better football team, the more physical team. They had a better scheme. They had the better quarterback. And, uh, And by the way, Aaron Rodgers, and I'm sure you noticed this. This was the good Aaron. This wasn't the passive aggressive. Do you notice how he barked at his center last night? No passive-aggressive nonsense. Aaron was totally vested, emotionally all in. He was going up, screaming at his center after that bad snap that almost screwed up and ended up a fumble. He went right after him, got right in his face. By the way, I like tough coaching, and I like tough quarterbacks. I don't care if a coach yells at a player. I want my quarterback to occasionally yell at players. Peyton Manning yelled at players. Peyton Manning yelling at Jeff Saturday as Pro Bowl center. Brady's barking at coaches. I want my quarterback to be vested. I don't need him to be f- invincible. I don't need him to be perfect. But I got to have you emotionally in. Don't pull a Jay Cutler. I want you all in. Off season, in season, Aaron was totally invested last night emotionally. I love that he's barking at his center and screaming at him. He's saying, hey, we're out playing him. Don't you screw it up. I loved it. Here's Aaron after. Matt actually suggested I play on the sideline uh, that first play, which was something we actually worked on Friday at practice, kind of scribbling in the dirt. And it worked out perfect. Uh, just put it right over Fred. So it got us kind of down there a little bit. We needed one more play. Um, how could he not be romantic about football, man? Week one was an anomaly. I said that, and I believe that. We bounced back in week two. 
played a great football team tonight right down to the wire. And this plane ride is going to feel incredible. <laughs> it's already landed. Good day for Green Bay. Totally earned it. Um, so I want to talk about uh, the Rams and the Buccaneers. Um, I'm not going to get into specifics, but uh, I was invited to a party Saturday night, and I got to spend some time with Stan Kroenke, who owns the Rams. And it's a big deal. That stadium cost $6.5 billion. It was supposed to cost like $3 billion. And um, Los Angeles is very competitive. LeBron's in town. The Dodgers draw four and a half, five million. We got a beach. We got mountains. People here are not interested in average. And Sean McVay bumped into Matt Stafford in Mexico. And Sean McVay's like, we can't have to coach perfectly to win games. This is L.A. And Matt Stafford said, I want to be a Ram. And McVay said, I want you to be a Ram. And Kroenke told me the story of he was on a tarmac and Sean McVay's on the phone and he's pleading with him. This is the guy. This is Los Angeles. This is the guy. And so Stan Kroenke knew because a lot of people were after Matt Stafford. Remember, there were like seven, eight teams were after Matt Stafford. You had to make a decision quickly. And Kroenke's like a global real estate guy. He was on the tarmac. The plane was taken off. And he knew that once the plane took off, it was going to take another 10 minutes to get in the air so you could talk again, right? You have to get over 10,000. So Kroenke's sitting there. The, the, the plane is taxing. McVeigh and Les Snead on the phone. Can we go after Matt Stafford? Can we make this massive move and draft picks and, and reboot? And Kroenke's like, go for it. And they got Matt Stafford, and you saw it with the Bears, and you saw it last night. Jared Goff now, and I like the kid. He's 0 for 10 when he doesn't have Sean McVay as a coach. And he got to a Super Bowl. He is capable. But last night is why they got Stafford. Home runs. They had a bunch of single and double hitters. McVay could get you doubles all day long. Stafford's a home run hitter. You don't have to design 11 play drives. And McVay was tired of having to coach a perfect drive to score. And there's a lot at stake here. McVay's legacy, Stafford's reputation, the L.A. market being relevant. This is a $6.5 billion stadium. This is, you could feel the pressure and how big that game was last night. That's the biggest game, football game played in Los Angeles since Pete Carroll was here and the Trojans faced Texas. And the, and the coaches know it and the players know it and the pressure is palpable. This is a big deal for a lot of reasons. And I got to tell you something. That is the best football game any team has played all year. Tampa had no shot to win that game. For a game to mean that much, listen to these stats. You're playing a great team. Third down, the Rams were 10 of 15. (laughs) That's like Alabama against Towson State. Uh, Pass attempt, Stafford, eight and a half yards a pass. No turnovers, 27 of 38. Penalties, the Rams had one all night. Red zone, two for two. That is as good a football team can play in a big spot. Tampa had no chance. Tampa wasn't terrible, uh, but I didn't think the Bears matched the urgency. I didn't think last night the Buccaneers matched the passion or urgency. And you can see how much Stafford means to McVay. And by the way, how much McVay means to Stafford. I never thought of Matt Stafford as an overly emotional guy. Uh, and I, McVay, when he came into this league, he's on that sidelines. He's very stoic. Sean McVay can't control himself. He's just running all over the field. He loves this guy so much because he knows how much is invested in Matt Stafford. The stadium's almost seven billion bucks. You're rolling the dice. You're giving up multiple picks. You're not going to have Aaron Donald around long. Jalen Ramsey. This thing has to work. It's got to work fast. LA's impatient. The market's distracted and crowded. And uh, that that to for to play that well. In that big of a stage, the Fox late game against that good of a team, I'm not sure I've seen a football team as smartly buttoned up as the Rams were last night. Yeah, that that felt, uh, I had several friends go, um, that felt massive. That was as big as football has been in Los Angeles. Professionally, that was as big a game as this city has had I just, you can't, I mean, that's like a, that felt like a game seven of a world series, game seven of an NBA final. Everybody was invested. Just a fantastic, 
crowd moment. Uh, and I don't think Tampa had a chance. Sometimes you just walk into a snake pit. It's like, it's not going to be our night. It's nothing against Tommy, nothing against Arians. I don't think anybody in the league walks into that stadium. Even the Raiders, who are 3-0, and nobody walked into that stadium last night and was beating the Rams for three and a half hours. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.